Well, perfect. You know, um, we kind of just started with some questions. Do we want to introduce ourselves um, and kind of let everyone know who everyone is and then um, see if there's any other questions? We kind of skipped that part as we were waiting for everyone to um, log in and get on. Okay. Jocelyn, would you want to start and kind of sure. tell us who you are? And Yeah, yeah. I'm Jocelyn. Um, I live in Litchfield, New Hampshire. We did a Prenda-ish pod last year and uh, are helping Prenda launch now that this is a, um, a funded option for learning pods in New Hampshire. So um, me as well as Kara and Katie on this call did a pod together and um, yeah, now helping with marketing. Awesome. Um, I'm Sophia. I um, work with Prenda on guide support. And so I get to answer a lot of the questions that come in once you are guiding and Jason. maybe need help. Um, yeah. So, and then uh, maybe, I'll maybe we'll just pick the next I'll person to introduce each other. So then that way we don't have to wait. Christine. I don't know. I don't know that. Well, we have two Christines, so I'll say hello. Oh, yeah. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Christine Hayes. I don't live too far from you I'm in uh, Somerville, Mass, about an hour south of you. And I just, um, and I work with kind of operations in the organization at Prenda. And I just want to give an enormous shout out to the folks in New Hampshire that have been on the ground, just working tirelessly, doing anything and everything you're all a joy and all your efforts are greatly appreciated. So thank, please know how much we, we see it. Oh, I have to pick someone. I'll go over to Brenda. All right. Hi guys. I've been able to interact with a few of you. So it's so nice to see your faces. Um, I'm Brenda Sibley and I'm the director of operations for micro schools. And so any, any questions you might have, you can, um, there, there's a lot of pieces to the puzzle we understand. So please feel free to reach out to us through fountain. Um, that that's probably your best way to get some answers. Um, and on that note, I'm going to pass it over to Julie because she's probably going to be the one to respond to you. Julie. <laughs> the way to be chronological, I guess, right? Um, I'm Julie and I think I've met, well, I have, I've met all of you that are um, New Hampshire applicants. I'm on the, the guide applicant experience team. And so I work with you to move forward and to hopefully get you going. So if you have any questions, please feel free to, to bother me as much as you need to, because you're not bothering me, by the way. Um, that's what we're here for, is to help you and support you through at least this first part. And then when you're onto onboarding, it's another team, but it's, you have um, access to your applicant portal where you can still, we still have guides reaching back and asking questions or whatever. So that's always available to you. So I'm happy you guys are here and I'm so excited to see what you're gonna do this next year. Um, let's say Valerie. Good morning. Um, I'm Valerie Blake and I'm the micro school guides community and communications manager. So I send out a lot of newsletters and announcements every week. Um, so excited to be on here and to get to know you guys better. Um, I'm going to Katie Spires. Valerie, do you mind me saying that you and Sophia have been guides? So folks, if you have any questions, kind of we, once you get through Fountain, now what? You have two experts that have lived it on the phone. Thank you, Christine. Hi, Valerie. Thank you so much. I'm Katie, and I am also boots on the ground, and I did a pod with Kara and Jocelyn this year, and I live in Litchfield. And I'm here to help anybody however I can. And I'm gonna pop over to Debbie because I wanna hear from one of our potential guides. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Debbie Downing and I am going to be a new guide. Uh, I'm in the process of getting ready to do my training. I'm already a guide, but I haven't done all the computer training yet. Um, I'm working with another woman who's doing a preschool kindergarten, so we're all in her program together, but I'm going to be the Prenda guide. So it's a, I'm excited, uh, a little nervous, but excited for this because it's the way that I have been running my daycare for um, 20 years now is just teaching autonomy and independence and how to get through life on your own accord and not counting on teachers and parents and things like that. So I'm excited to be here. 
Debbie, I have to say when you, you came in, so Deborah Dow came in and then Deb, Debbie Downing came in at the same time. We're like, wait, is this the same person? What's going on? And so we kind of figured out you're two different people. Yeah. Fusion, I heard, but we're on the right track now. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> oh, I have to pick someone. Sorry. I've been, I, I just popped in here. Um, how Christine Cummings. Good morning, everyone. Um, I am in San Francisco. My name is Christine. I am uh, running the marketing for Prenda. I'm working very closely with Jocelyn and Katie and, and many other folks that have already introduced themselves. Um, very excited to meet you guys in person. Um, it's always great to, to see faces and hear voices to, to uh, the people that we're trying to to win over to Prenda and trying to uh, get up and running with, with micro schools. So very excited to see you and can't wait for you to, to start your micro schools and dive really deep into what it means to be a Prenda guide and have those, those great experiences. And I was in and out because my daughter is uh, now on her way to daycare. So I don't know who spoke already and who didn't. So maybe someone can help me. <laughs> I want to hear from Deborah Dow because I can see her classroom behind her and it gets me really excited. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Deborah Dow. I'm in Meredith, New Hampshire, um, right in the center of New Hampshire and I'm completing my um, micro school uh, pod training right now. Um, yep, this is my, we bought a house in September um, and it's an 1860s schoolhouse, a little red schoolhouse um, on a mountain. So it's really cool um, to be able to relive kind of the um, old lifestyle and kind of put a new twist of how, how to teach and have the children in here. It's going to be, it's really kind of um, historic. So I really am excited to start my pod. That is incredible. Yeah, I'm very excited. And I think we My haven't heard from Melanie. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm Melanie Neely. I live in Litchfield, New Hampshire. I just came aboard last Thursday, to be specific. And I came on the ground really to be support to, for New Hampshire and um, to support Katie. And again, like using her words, boots on the ground, just learning so much in this last few days. So I am I'm just um, curious to listen, just open my ears and listen to all of you. Awesome, that's so perfect. Oh, and then, oh, we, yeah, I think that's, oh, Kara, we didn't hear from Kara yet, I'm sorry. Hi everybody, I'm Kara. Um, I started off <clears throat> in a, doing a pod this year, like Jocelyn and Katie said with them, and then started working for Prenda to support the New Hampshire school districts. Um, then got into helping Katie and Jocelyn with marketing, and now I'm training to be a guide. That's so exciting. Okay. Uh, Danny, we did hear from you, but I think a lot of people weren't on introducing yourself again. Sure, um, I'm Danny. I live in um, Kentucky, New Hampshire, and I'm a, a former middle school teacher, just excited to um, start a pod and my home <laughs> and be able to stay with my my kiddos at home and still teach that's so great i it's so exciting i think that that's like i mean this is like a good mix of what all prenda guides are you know they we come from just different places and so it's exciting to get to be with you guys so uh we're gonna open this up for any questions that you might have and then see if we can help answer some of those questions. I have a quick question and this is about Julie Mudd. Is Julie, Julie, are you like also boots on the ground helping getting things going there? Or are you hoping to be a guide? What are your, what are your plans? What are my intentions? Are you asking? Yes, what are your intentions? Um, I would say that uh, initially I've been invited on to kind of help with the New Hampshire networking um, between parents and um, and guide possibilities, contacts to the districts. Um, I like to say that um, Jocelyn and Katie, those are my moms. Uh, I used to run a maternal wellness center and um, <laughs> not the mayor at all, but I, um, I'm thankfully connected from a whole collection of, of um, like-minded 
um, families from years ago that are still really pretty deeply connected and woven into our communities. So um, it's, it's a true blessing to be able to offer them one more gift in what feels like um, a, a pretty insane dream the past few years. So I think giving people an alternative to what has been um, and in a way that feels really a little bit more authentic to all the pieces of the puzzle um, I think it's a great way for us to invite what has been a really healthy, happy network of families into what is kind of, the, I think, what, what I see is the next step in education. The next step in education. Yeah. Perfect. So does anyone have any questions? Well, when Katie and I spoke yesterday morning, um, she let me know there had been some questions around materials and how you communicate that to parents. So maybe Valerie and Sophia, you could talk about how you approached it. Sure, you wanna go first, Valerie? <laughs> like how you volunteered me for that. <laughs> I, I just asked, I just gave my parents a list, like a wish list of things that I wanted. And it was totally optional. They didn't have to, I didn't care if they donated or not, but I thought I'd throw it out there and, and I got lucky. My parents were pretty generous. <laughs> I had one parent give me like a hundred dollars. She's like, I would pay for, for Prenda if I could. So if this helps you get supplies, but I asked for things like, um, toilet paper and hand sanitizer and like those kind of things, uh, last year, because COVID had happened and those are um, things that you don't and, and toilet paper stuff that the kids are coming using they're in your home so you go through more of it when you have a micro school than um, you would if it was just your own family in there um, and then um, and and they were really generous in donating and, and if not like it was totally fine but it was cool. um so I too I um I, I homeschooled actually before I did Prenda for a little bit and I have five kids. So um, when it came to my first year, I kind of thought like, I'm going to, they were all coming from, we came, I started in the middle of the year. So they were all coming from traditional public school, a lot of them. <clears throat> and so at first I didn't really ask for a lot because I wasn't really sure what I needed. I had a lot of the things I felt like I needed to start, like had lots of crayons and lots of markers, but going into my second year and now into my last year, I've realize there are a lot of things that you run out of. And so I feel like just like in school, um, scissors, pencils, tape, we do a lot. We use a lot of tape. I have a K2 class and we do a lot of imagination station. It's like kids love it. Um, glue sticks. Um, and then I actually asked my neighbor yesterday, like what kind of supplies do you ask for? And she says she's realized she goes through a lot of paper, construction paper, printer paper, lined paper. Um, but the thing that um, I actually started this year that I've seen a few guides do is um, it's always optional. I've never said like, you have to have these supplies. I actually this year asked um, in lieu of supplies, if they'd be willing to um, donate 10 or $15 and then leave that up to the guide to buy. So I buy in bulk, I'll buy like lots of toilet paper and lots of paper if I can store that. And so I don't have to hold 80 boxes of crayons because a parent, you know, bought them on sale. And I love that. But if I don't have space for that, that can sometimes be difficult. So um, we went the route, my neighbor and I went the route of asking for if parents are well, open to it, just donating 10 or $15. Um, but I do see some guides make Amazon wish lists and send it to parents because that's easy. Parents can just click yes, send it to them and... Um, a lot of guides have had some really generous parents and then parents, if they can't do that, don't feel like that obligation, like they couldn't do it. Katie, I saw your question about, is that something tax write offable? If you're using your own money, you can definitely like keep receipts because that counts as like office supplies <laughs> or, or, um, yeah, each state has their own like taxes too. I don't know, Arizona has um, something, it, this might, I don't know if New Hampshire has this, but um, uh, if you teach like so many hours within a year, you qualify for a special, like, I don't know what it's called, like a, 
grant. I don't even know if it's a grant. It's like a, something that's up to like $250 that you can write off supplies for. Um, but that one I didn't qualify for because I wasn't teaching that amount during the year. Um, but it's just like your own business too. So on your taxes, it just counts as office supplies. So definitely keep receipts for anything that you guys purchase. Um, it, it, it will come in handy <laughs> when you're doing taxes at the end of the year. I don't know if everybody has seen it, but in the chat, Valerie has posted her school supply list. Valerie, you want to walk through that real quick? Because I don't know if people on the phone can see it. Very yeah, well. so this one's a little different than from maybe the year before because this is more like COVID related, <laughs> but it's the one I did last year. I had a lot of supplies left over from the year before, so I didn't ask for a lot of things, um, but I wanted to make sure we went through a lot of hand soap, so, um, and I didn't expect every parent to donate this, but I had some parents give me like double this, which was helpful, but um, Toilet paper, paper towels, we go through a lot of, um, my kids used a lot of dry erase markers because we had whiteboards that they would use to take notes and, and practice handwriting on. Um, and we went through a lot of that. So, and then we used a lot of tape when we do um, imagination. They're creating things. So I am constantly asking for this. And this list I actually asked for twice during the year because we go, these are the things we went through the most. Um, they said make an organic shape. And I gave them an organic shape and I colored it in. <laughs> that I think somebody is not muted. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, those are the things that I found in my class that we just went through a lot. I added uh, value. So I had a little Google Doc that I just made of some supplies that I thought of, but I added your list to the bottom that way, you okay. know, you can kind of get, but I mean, I feel like a lot of it is pretty similar. I mean, you do really go through a lot of, I feel like my biggest um, supply need was imagination station because mm -hmm. kids gets very excited about making things and you do want to let them do what they want to do and see how much tape they're using I'm like oh my gosh but yeah. it like they make some amazing things and it's great and wonderful and you're really happy at the end <laughs> yeah it's super fun um I every week I would ask parents to bring in all their recycling every Wednesday oh, yeah. um because they go through and they go through it <laughs> I had another really good question from a parent who's not on this call, but because it's recorded, I'd love to send it to her. Mm -hmm. She was really nervous about not being a Pinteresty mom um, in the sense of like, she was nervous. How does Prenda support um, moms and or guides in particular in activities? And I was trying to explain to her that it's all located in Prenda world, but perhaps you guys could kind of give a better window into that. You don't need to be this super creative brain that is like has a classroom at hand and um because I think sometimes when you go on the website uh, you know we see these beautiful classrooms but then we are also in just regular old living rooms so I would <laughs> love to hear more about that I am the entirely opposite of a Pinterest mom but I also have those fears like I see doing and I think that that's like one of those things where you like say um where they say like comparison is the thief of joy um, because I have realized like my class has been so fun. Um, I don't, I, I want to, but then I think it's fine. Cause that's actually, I actually think it's not really what Prenda is like when we're, when we're the Pinterest person, then we're not giving, always giving that opportunity for our students to be creative and to, um, uh, be like, do their own thing. And just people that are really great at that are awesome. And I'm, jealous of that all the time but I think that um I have owned that it's okay to not be that um and to do what was with that is what is within our capabilities and I don't feel like my students um have missed out on anything because I didn't label a cupcake to be you know uh whatever so <laughs> I mean and not to say if you are a Pinterest person please like I love your ideas but the reality is I know I'm probably not going to be able to do that and I'm okay with that <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I felt like I love being arts and crafty. My micro school was a K through two micro school, which I feel like you can be a little more with the littlers. Um, but before I did a micro school, I taught preschool for seven years. So I feel like I maybe was that Pinterest. Like I had and my upstairs den was like decorated all preschooly and cute. But then when um, I realized that starting a micro school is different and I, it, I didn't want to use that space for anymore just to be taken up. My house is kind of small. And so I had talked to somebody and that was the concern I had. Like, I don't, I don't want my house to be taken over like it was with preschool and I can't transform my downstairs to not look like a home. Like, I don't want it to look like a classroom. I want it to look like a home. And I was told that's okay. That's what we want. Like we want to show that micro schools can be done in any space, in any home, no matter the size. And so I, my home just looked like a normal home. Uh, I did bring in some cubbies downstairs just so kids had places to put stuff, but it still looked like it belonged as a part of my home. I didn't decorate anything special. Um, we stuck up growth mindset posters and I just used the back of my kitchen um, pantry door and the kids would do artwork occasionally and want to hang it there and that is as fancy as we got <laughs> and I actually loved it it was a relief because I didn't feel like I have to I had to make anything cute because it was about the kids it wasn't about me Sophia said it really well um, if you get too creative and crafty I think it kind of takes over from the kids being creative and it's more important that they're you're displaying their artwork and their things and having their ideas be a part of what you're doing in your micro school, then um, the focus is to make your home look like a school. I think Joyce got added to the call. Did Joyce get a chance to introduce herself? Joyce, do you wanna introduce yourself? We lost her. We did. We lost her. That's okay. I'm trying to think of some of our other really good questions. I have a question about, um, do we have to register for an IEN? Sorry, my dog is going crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she just had a bath. She doesn't like the clean smell. Um, so do we have to register with the state for, I mean, for tax purposes for an IEN or do we just use our social security number? That is totally up to you. If you want to create an LLC and using the IN for that, you can, or you can just do it as an individual and just use your name and social. Okay. Um, I have a question about communicating with parents because two of the parents are sitting here that I'll be communicating with. <laughs> um, like, what do you recommend? <laughs> what do you recommend? Is there a, um, a platform that we use for that? Is there um, expectations of how often we do that? And what do you recommend is just the best way to do so? I think that's, I think everyone uses a little bit different. I um, use uh, Facebook Messenger one year. This year, my group is using um, a GroupMe app so that I can post like general things to my parents. Um, some people use Class Dojo. I think that's a personal preference. Some, some um, parent or some guides personally text each of their parents. In my experience, from feedback, I think that um, parents do like somewhat of it personal, but sometimes they wish they had known other. Um, when you do it like personal like that, sometimes they don't know the other parents, and so that was the only downside to that. Um, I try to. I think it just depends on your class. I try to communicate with my parents. Um, to let them know, you know, what we're doing every week, you know, just little insights or send pictures. And um, I think, and then you're doing GPSs, you're doing meetings with the parents and the students also like about how they're doing in class. But aside from that, I would say I do it at least once a week or every other week, depending on what's going on in our micro school. What do you think, Valerie? Yeah, I do mine really similar. I used WhatsApp and just created like a group for my micro school on WhatsApp. Um, and we, and I, I would post pictures there a lot. Parents would share pictures. Um, but I also did a like a Google Doc newsletter every week and sent that out. And then on the day I would send that out, 
I really just post the link in WhatsApp. That's like all I really would do. But then I'd email once a week um, the kids' progress from like Lexi. I, I think they might be doing it different this year, but uh, when we had to manually do all that, I would email that out and just if if it was appropriate to put like a little note in there about how the kids had done that week. So the parents are getting those individually. There was a question in the chat it says, do you know if the student enrolled will be allowed to participate in district team sports or is that up to the individual districts? Somebody they can. I'm sure might have. Yeah, to. they can. So no matter even district or community pods, you can participate in district sports. Um, because you're filing an intent to homeschool to be in a community pod, homeschoolers can legally participate in district sports and because you're still enrolled in the public school when you're in a district pod they can participate in district sports that's awesome that's not something that we get to do right. in Arizona so and clubs which is also cool it's another cool one um one of the questions too that I have right here was about how do you guys keep your information organized, like your student information? Do you recommend like files or a binder and how much of that information do you have to keep organized? I don't have a lot of information. I mean, because their curriculum they're doing online. I, so, I mean, I have a Google doc of passwords and logins. Um, Cause I think that, but aside from that, and then um, this year, I used to just send artwork home this year. I'm trying to keep more of like a folder for each of them. We'll see how that goes. But I wouldn't say for me, at least I don't have a terrible amount of um, documents to keep. Valerie? I never did either. I did have a binder. Like I would have the parents fill out an emergency contact form and I keep all that in a binder with me. So I had easy access to it, but everything else was on the computer. I had a Google doc like Sophia with the, all their passwords and um, and then the kids stuff, I just had cubbies with that they kept all their stuff in and I'd make sure they send everything home that they did every day so it didn't collect at my house. But, but that was pretty much it. And I think now this year, you'll have a little bit more visibility into like their emergency contact information and stuff like that. So that wasn't available last year, but now the guides will have more visibility into that. So that will be just be uh, housed in Prenda world. So you don't have to have it in a separate location. And I am so excited for guides for that this year. <laughs> That's like awesome. Deborah, did you have a question you wanted to elaborate on? Okay, so I had um, one of my students um, parents told me that they were notified yesterday that they were enrolled all set and that I would be notified um, as soon as I completed probably my Prenda World, um, up to Prenda World and classroom setup. Um, is there a way to know that people are in fact registered um, without hearing it from the parents just because like now that I have someone that has um, registered their kindergartner, my number that I said originally that I wanted to have, is going to go down because I'm going to need to give that child a little bit more um, support than my older kids. So I just want, I might change my number. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, you know, I don't know if it's different in um, New Hampshire. I'm assuming it's the same and, and this goes, but um, we have always told, like, as we talk to parents, um, first to say like, Hey, could you just let me know when you enroll? So that way I just have track of it because that, at least in my experience, you'll have a lot of parents you talk to and sometimes they're going to, they say they're going to enroll, but then they don't. Right. And so, right. um, I kind of I didn't know if Prenda could talk to us like before they told the parent, because then I have someone that said to me, well, I'm going to miss out on my registration. And I got to hurry up please. And like, was really amped up. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm not full right now. And she's like, well, you're going to fill up really fast. And like, I don't want to like deter people away and say, you know, yeah, I'm not going to take that many now because I have a kindergartner. I'm not going to say that, but I want to make sure that I know before our parents are coming to me and saying, I heard from Brenda that they'll let you know soon that I'm ready. No, I just feel like that should have came to me first. Brenda does notify you. Um, and I think that that's still in the world at some point, um, parent, the parents team does notify us, but it's not always like, 
it, it, it's not always exactly when um, the parents know, because sometimes parents are working through, like if they have missing the documents and we don't always as guides know that part. So hmm. that's kind of hard. I don't know if anybody else can speak to that a little bit better. I'm Deborah. Did, is this somebody that you've met with and that you agreed to guide? Somebody that, her? somebody that I know. Yes, but there's one person that I don't know, and um, letting people into my home, like I want to know about them. Well, yeah, them, you guys right? have you guys get to mutually decide on who's in your pod. Like people can't just enroll in your pod because they want to be in your pod if you guys haven't agreed up on that. Right. So I got the link that. to send to them to the yep. family that I've spoken to. Yeah, um, and that should. I think that should help filter out anybody that I'm not comfortable with. Cause I have that control to do that. But yeah. um, once I've done that, like, I guess, I don't know. I just felt kind of like funny. Like she's like, Oh, do you, did you know that we're all set? I'm like, yeah, I think you told me you're all set, but they're like, Oh no, Prentice, so we're good. And I'm not, I'm not complaining. I'm just, I'm just wondering if there's, if I'm missing something, maybe, maybe there was a, like, maybe there was something sent to me saying so-and-so is registering registered today. This is what's the update. You know what I mean? And typically, I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, typically we send you a text message to notify you, oh. but sometimes it's a little bit slow. Um, okay. But that's what we've been doing, at least in Arizona. We send guides text messages when we can, when we see okay. that we're enrolled. Hmm. Um, but if it's not happening, it could just be user error where this is okay. all so brand new, you know, yeah. um, but I will look into it and we'll figure okay. that out and I'll, thank you. and I'll get that feedback back. Okay, thank you. How does it work with the teacher of record or the certified teacher? Like how often is that somebody that checks in with us and how is the, how does that process work? Brenda, do you happen to know that? I don't know who that would be. That, that's more of like a student team thing and they are not here to, to speak to that. Um, they're the ones that um, manage the the teacher teachers of record and all of that. So I'm not sure exactly how that works at this moment. It's sort of evolved and I don't know. I don't know the current process for that. But we can get that and make sure that gets communicated out. Like I said, I'm taking notes and I think there's a couple of things we didn't have perfect answers for. So we can follow up for sure. So that's not something that's already happened. Like Sophia or Valerie, you didn't have something like that. We in Arizona, we don't have that. Okay. Okay. Can we talk about substitute training? I think Katie and I are gonna train to substitute for Kara if need be. Do you guys have substitutes? How often did you use them and how intensive is that training? I did use a subs, I've used a substitute. Um, the training I think is similar to um, the guide training. It's pretty much the same, except for you don't have a site inspection, I believe. Um, and then um, because we are contractors, we decide, we mutually agreed on with the substitute, uh, what pay would be, how we would do that, how we would pay them, when we would pay them. Um, and then I pretty, last year, I pretty much used it anytime I was gone just because of the convenience for parents. But I did have days where parents, it's, I think it's just up to your classroom because I did have sometimes the parents were like, well, instead of a substitute, we would rather just keep our kids home that day because they're used to you, they're used to this process. And so I think that's really dependent upon your class in my experience, Valerie. I never used a substitute, but I was, I, I always had everything pretty planned out but on the rare occasion that I was sick. I just ended up canceling class because if I'm sick, I'm not going to want to substitute in my home and the kids over at my house. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I, for me, I used the substitute only if I was going to be gone for some reason, and it was unexpected. Um, and then I think it was also, so last year we had little groups of guides that would meet together and my little pod of uh, guides decided on, we were going to pay this much per hour. And we also decided um, it would be dependent. Like I would always have mine really planned out. And so I would tell the substitute exactly how everything worked, like this time we do lunch, this is the time we do this. But some um, guides would say, because they've already been through the training and they obviously have to know the person too, like they would just say, here's the day you plan it, how you want to plan it. And then that would be 
up to you. So I think it's really, there's a lot of freedom in how you want to run your micro school in that sense. So a day that um, you would ask the parents, if you didn't have a sub and you had the parents, what would you ask the parents to do? What were your expectations for them to get done that day? If it was a day you couldn't have a sub and you couldn't be there either. There, I personally, I did not have any expectations. I said, this is a day if you'd like to do conquer. If they didn't have their logins, I would give it to them. I would send it to them. Um, a lot of times they had it. Um, if it was going to be gone, like I was like, hey, I've been sick. We're going to be gone for a couple of days. If you'd like to work on conquer and you need your computers, we can sign those out. Um, and then I'd left that up to the parents to decide like what they educationally felt was important for their child for those two days. And some people did conquer and some people didn't do anything. And I, I was really okay with that. I just like left that up to the parents' choice. So would that count as a school day or count as your hours though? Um, it would depend. They could do makeup school if they chose that. When we went virtual, like when COVID happened and we went virtual, I did plan a day out and I would send a link like we're going to do mystery science and this is what we're doing and here are the supplies um, and we and because we met for those for that little bit we could use that as ours um, but we don't really do virtual school anymore so I think I think it would depend and I think it would be how your parents enter it because they would need to enter it as bonus time you couldn't enter that as like an attendance day. Deborah has another question. Um, question air for families. If a child is identified with an IEP or speech, for example, Prendify, Prenda, sorry, will notify the guide of these to go over these for GPS, correct? You are aware when a student has an IEP. Um, hopefully the parent has told you. In my experience, parents are pretty open with that, like they want you to know, but not always. But I do believe those are going to be um, that information is in Prenda world now. And then um, I don't know how it is in, in New Hampshire. Um, but I won't be able to access Prenda world until I'm completed with my training, right. which I'm very close to doing, but it said two weeks before starting of school, guide, we'll have our meetings, the GPS, but just the, just the parent and the guide to go over that information, right? On the questionnaire. Um, I don't, I'm not sure about that. That is a little bit different than Arizona. Um, does anyone know about this? Just to not sure. talk about that in front of the child, like any of the behavioral or speech or, right, you, you have an um, initial conference or a meeting, GPS. Oh, yeah, we have, student. yeah, we have an early screener and that's, yeah, that's, that is true. We do that without the student to talk about like any, um, ours is like a couple weeks into school to see okay. like how, what we have observed and then to talk to the parents. Um, and then we fill out a form that we send in to our, we do kind of have a teacher of record in the sense that we have learning advocates that help yes. um, if a student is struggling or maybe needs a little more help. Okay. And we can send that information to them. Um, and then they and then they kind of facilitate what the next steps are. At and learning, learning advocate would, would communicate with the parent? Um. Yes, in, in Arizona, yeah, last year, I the, they communicated with parents and then with guide to talk about what some things we could do, yes. Okay, thank you. I would add on that learning advocate team, there are experts in working with students um, that perhaps have special needs. I just didn't want anyone to think they had or expected to be expert. No, that's a great point, Christine. I think that that is a, is a concern a lot of um, guides have that, especially if you're not, have not been a teacher or you've not been in that situation. Um, Prenda has really come a long way to like help us facilitate different needs in our classroom and maybe how to help those students or how Prenda can help those students. And so you're definitely not like just thrown out there to figure it out on your own. If we're to do anything in the community, um, I've spoken to someone about this um, as a Prenda pod, um, students' involvement. Um, do we have, to, should we need to go through, if we're representing as Prenda, like we need to go through you guys first? Like, cause obviously like media, like the newspaper is going to, I just know that they're going to um, 
blow up on this new idea and want to want to showcase it. So I'm just anything that they do, we need to connect them with you guys first because we're not supposed to represent, right? And to mislead or give wrong, wrong wording, just so we align our wording. Correct. I think like if anybody wanted to do an interview or um, that sort of thing that you would have to contact the, um, I think it's press at prenda.co. Um, and we can look into that. I could, we can make sure that that's the correct email, but you would contact them. But I mean, if you wanted to be like in a parade or something, I think that's fine. I think that you just couldn't be like speaking for Prenda gotcha. um, without contacting them. Mm -hmm. I'm going through my questions, questions on um, on Facebook, and one woman was asking regarding payment. We know how much guides get paid in New Hampshire, but do they get paid weekly, biweekly, monthly, semesterly? Does anyone know? Arizona gets paid monthly on. So if you had a school in in August, you would get paid towards the end of September, like around the twentieth. But I'm not sure, Christine, do you know, is that going to be the same for New Hampshire? Okay. Perfect. So for the month before you get paid. Yeah, for the month prior. <laughs> One of my parents asked me um, the question, the registration form said, are you going to apply for any financial um, assistance for this? She said, what does that mean? And then it didn't ask for any financial backup. I didn't see that on mine when I did my daughter's, but she said she would, they, they asked, it was a same thing about a financial piece. No? I'm not sure about that. Oh, yeah, I'm not aware of that either. Okay, I'll have her reread it. Could, could that be the start to EFAs? Yes. I bet you that that's our our start, which we're working with that. It's a new program that just got launched in New Hampshire and um, they are not accepting applications until I think next week is when it's supposed to start or it's soon at like, but so the EFAs aren't fully open yet. Um, and that's where we are struggling with using them because it's later. Can you explain that more? Um, so educational freedom accounts just, just passed in New Hampshire yep. and, um, the person who is setting up all those educational freedom accounts accepted pre-applications, but there are no like formal applications until all the laws are written and put into place. So where they are passed and it is happening, all the wording isn't complete. So they can't work to do it and qualify and receive it until that's all buttoned up and sealed. And I don't think that they're going to be ready until the middle of next week is the last I heard. And those are individually to each student um, funds that are allocated from the school district, correct? The EFAs. Um, yeah. um, so you can't use, they, they're going to have to pick between the federal grant. So Right now, there's a federal grant that was passed by the commissioner of New Hampshire, and that allows each student $5,000 to use Prenda, in which that money is divvied up between paying for their supplies and using Prenda and paying a guide and all of that stuff. The EFAs, the baseline of an EFA, if a student qualifies, is something different. You So you have to either use that grant money or use the EFA money. And the EFA money is less if the student doesn't qualify for any additional services outside of just qualifying for EFA. And you have to qualify for EFA, which is 300% above poverty line or below. Mm -hmm. And so um, once you qualify for that EFA, you receive a baseline of $3,700, which is obviously less than that $5,000. But if you qualify for free and reduced lunches, you're gonna receive an additional, it's like somewhere around $2,000. Don't quote me on the numbers completely. And then um, if you qualify for like special services, depending on which special services, it can be an additional $2,000 for each 
special service you qualify for, or if you speak English as a second language, you could qualify for more money. So potentially the students would have more money to use towards Prenda and tutoring. Um, so that they would they would just use that five thousand dollars to be a part of Prenda and the pod so that they could pay the guide and all of that would be taken care of. But it would be they would have the extra funds to pay for outside tutoring and anything that they would need for that, um, which would be put into like a class wallet. Will the students, um, will the parents be notified of that application through Prenda, or is that something that we need they need to go look for? I think they're going to have to go separately because Prenda is not connected to the EFA. It's just another funding option um, that can fund Prenda, but it's not through Prenda. So um, families will have to seek out. If you just Google education freedom account, you can see it all there and apply through there. We're getting close to hitting the hour mark. Does any potential guide have any last questions for us? Any frustrations, anything that wasn't clear, any hoops you feel like you have to jump through? Because we're always looking to, you know, streamline the process and make things easier for you guys um, as you launch your, your learning pods. One thing that um, has been hard for me and because I'm still working and trying to train and I'm just thinking about someone like Danny or anybody coming on um, in the next week or so is that there are live trainings that you do on top of the training you do on your own and the training on my own I have I can find the time but those zooms are only offered one time a day and generally I can't do that one time a day. Um, and that's been tricky because you can't move forward until you do that live zoom so that's been difficult for me in managing getting this training done um, and completed. And then when I hear two weeks for kids to get the materials, I'm, it makes you panic a little bit. No, thank you for that. I mean, I think that that's important and those are things that um, definitely have to be considered. And I would say that the positive thing that I think that you should take away from this is that Prenda is really great at listening to feedback and changing things. If we need to, um, we have now um, just kind of started in July, they just kind of redid it. And so I think that anytime you have feedback, like always reach out to someone and um, Prenda is very open to feedback. Yeah, and I'll pass along everything that we've heard today. Um, and but before we go, either Katie or Jocelyn, do you wanna talk a little bit about the 14th? Yeah. Um, so I hope, I know we met, um, we chatted with Debbie about it the other night, um, but Deborah and um, Danny, if you guys can make it or even tell your families or prospective families about it. Um, we're hosting a big um, kind of Prenda launch or deep dive event with current Prenda parents from Arizona and from other um, states where Prenda has existed for a while and current Prenda guides who they're flying in to really just share more deeply about this experience, why it's been transformative for their children or their students, um, answering questions, you know, getting, getting people excited, like you guys who are, who are already in it, but also, you know, answering the questions and calming the anxieties of parents who, you know, aren't really sure they can leave traditional school or homeschool for a Prenda pod. Like they need a little bit more convincing or they need some questions answered. So we're going to have a big launch next Saturday, August 14th at um, St. Anselm College at from two to four. And then like a guide follow up, um, like happy hour for those of you training as guides. If you want to just hang with some current guides and get you know, even more questions and, and share ideas and share best practices, all of those kind of things. Find your people, find your tribe and, uh, and bring them all, invite them all next Saturday. I think the first, Maybe I want to say- To let you know too. Oh, sorry, Jocelyn, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think the first hundred people who registered get a, a free backpack full of back to school supplies Thank and you. swag. So, um, so register today. <laughs> And I just put in the note, you don't have to be there for the full two to four, certainly feel free to come for 
some are part, I know everybody has family demands and all that good stuff. So whatever part you can come, we'd love to have you. Ashlyn, where do we go to register? Yeah, if you go to prenda.com backslash events and you'll, you'll see the New Hampshire events, you can scroll down and it's also on our Facebook page that it'll link you to the event, right? I'll put it in the chat now too. Um, uh, Katie Spires, is this the event that I told you? I don't know if it got changed, but um, Jocelyn, it didn't look when I went to uh, register, I knew to register, but it just kind of said event and it said free. It didn't say get tickets like it does on our info sessions. I don't know if that's been changed. So I don't know if people needed to realize to through register. Facebook or through the website? What did, website? Did you go to prenda.com backslash events and click on it there? Or did you click on our Facebook event? Right? In the Facebook group. Okay. I haven't looked at it in the past couple of days, but the last I looked at it, it just, it shows the ticket and it says free, but it doesn't prompt you to think you need to purchase and register, not purchase, but yeah. take the next step. Like we would an info session. Yeah. So it's worth looking at because people may have, I think people have put interested on Facebook, but maybe not taken the step on the event bright side. Okay. I'll look into that. Thank you. Sure. Julie, did you want to say something really quick? I just wanted to let the guides that are in the flow know that I also was a guide a while ago. So if you have questions about, um, I did through, through eighth grade. So you got a lot of perspective from K through two. Um, but my, most of my group is sixth, seventh and eighth grade. So if you have questions along the way, just let me know. And I'm happy to help also. I actually went to Julie's class and sat in when I did it and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I went to sixth through eighth grade class. Cause she's just so amazing. <laughs> You're so nice. It was. Awesome. Well, I'm so glad that you guys all came. We're really grateful that, for all of your questions. Um, and um, I hope you guys can make it to the event next Saturday, because I think it sounds like it's going to be amazing. So thank you, guys. I look thank forward to meeting you then. Thanks for coming. <laughs>